What exactly are the requirements for a single plane swing and is a member of the Good Good Golf Crew a single planer? Let's find out. Hey everybody, welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game. And today, like I said in the beginning of the video, I want to take a look at one of the Good Good Golf members. If you haven't heard of Good Good, they're a pretty big golf vlog YouTube channel. You should go check them out. But one of their members, I believe, has made a few changes. And by my definition of a single plane golf swing, he may fall into that category. We'll examine his swing and take a look at that and see if you agree with me. But also, I want to try to distill this down. I want to try and get it down to the very bare minimum requirement requirements of what would constitute a single plane golf swing. It may be different than what you actually define it as. Let's get into this video. Guys, real quick before we get started, I will be putting out a video next week, weather permitting, that should be my third and final on-course vlog of the test of the single plane swing review. Now, I will still be using the single plane swing moving forward for the foreseeable future. However, in regards to the actual in-depth review that I've been performing here on my channel on this playlist, I'm going to do a third and final on-course test to see just how low I can go. So be on the lookout for that. That should be coming out next week before the new year. It'll be my final video of 2021. Go check out the Indoor Golf Shop by clicking the link in my description below. Go to their website, use the promo code TESTDUMMY to save 10% off of your purchases. And lastly, don't forget, in every one of my videos, there is an Amazon link that you can click. It costs you nothing extra. You have to sign up for nothing extra. It doesn't give you a bunch of spam in your email box. Any purchase you make, it doesn't have to be golf related. This channel gets a little bit of a kickback to help support the channel. Thanks so much for everybody who's been supporting me so far in that by clicking through that link. Continue to do so. Now, I want to talk a little bit about what I believe the single plane swing itself is defined as. Some of you are going to disagree with me on that, and that's fine. We could talk about it in the comments. But I think that I can define the single plane golf swing with just one component. I don't think it has to be multiple components. I want to talk to you about it before we get on to the member of Good Good that I believe has become a single planer somewhat at least. Let's talk about this. Now, if I asked you to tell me what all is involved in the single plane golf swing? You would probably mention the fact that your left arm, or your lead arm, excuse me, your lead arm needs to be in line this way with the golf club, and then your trail arm needs to be in line with the golf club on this plane. So you're starting out where you want to finish an impact without all these compensations and having complicated angles between your arms and the club. You're going to start out with everything being really simplified, and that would be piece number one. Piece number two, a lot of you might talk about getting your distance from the golf ball. You're getting a little further away. Instead of crowding the golf ball, you're going to have a little more distance because your arms are going to be outstretched to set up for the single plane. Yet a third component a lot of people would associate with a single plane swing is a much wider stance. The space between your feet when you set up is going to get wider and wider as the club gets longer and longer. So for instance, with a driver, you might get super wide with it. And even with a pitching wedge, you're still going to be much wider than you would. A lot of people would say that that is the third piece of the puzzle. And then, of course, the fourth would probably be as you move through the golf ball, your left knee is going to buckle toward the target. And most people would associate that with being less rotational and having less post up on your left leg like a conventional swing. Instead of posting up and rotating on that, you're going to buckle the left knee toward the target and then rotate around a buckled left knee. Now, all of those pieces, all of those components, if you take a look at Mo Norman videos and how he set up to the golf ball and how he made his single plane swing, and then what Todd Graves is actually teaching, you would say that all of those components are there. The wider stance, the arm straight out, the right arm being aligned on this axis, the left arm being aligned on this axis, the buckled left knee going toward the target, the distance further away from the ball. All those are things that Todd teaches after working with Mo Norman for years and developing his teaching approach to the single plane golf swing. So you say that defines it, right? Well, now if you take a look at somebody like Kirk Younga, he doesn't necessarily put his feet a lot wider. He may have somewhat of a wider stance at, at certain times, but he doesn't teach to get your feet really spread way apart. He teaches a more athletic setup or a more conventional setup in regards to your legs and the distance between your feet. Also, your distance from the golf ball, he's not teaching everybody to get way far away from the golf ball. So if you take a look at that, he's kind of thrown those two components out. And I think a lot of us would agree 
that he still has a single plane swing and he teaches a lot of his students successfully that method of single plane swing. Not to mention the fact that he doesn't worry about keeping your trail foot down, which could be another component of the single plane swing. A lot of us commonly associate with it, but he doesn't care about your foot staying down, whereas Todd Graves does. I'm not so sure that the single plane swing has to look just like Mo. I believe that the only real component is that your arms have to be extended to eliminate that complicated angle to get your arms in line with the shaft of the club so that you start the club as you want to finish it. You keep it on one plane throughout the entire swing and deliver it back and through. Take a look at Kirk Younger. Take a look at Bryson DeChambeau. He is a single plane golfer. He sets up on the single plane. He even does it with his putter. But he is definitely what people call a single plane golfer. And he keeps his legs bent. He doesn't get his feet super wide apart. He doesn't move too far away from the golf ball. He doesn't do all of those things that Mo did, but he's taken Mo's single plane theories to an entirely new stratosphere with distance. It is insane. The stock yardages that this guy has, he is the longest player on the PGA Tour, but he's using a single plane swing. All right, so now let's get back to the guy from the Good Good Golf Crew that I believe has turned himself into a single planer. Now, if you haven't heard of Good Good, they're a, a group of guys. They've been friends for years. They're all younger. They, they do all sorts of challenges and on-course vlogs and matches. They're a pretty big golf YouTube channel. They've got over half a million subscribers on that, and then each person, uh, member of that crew, has their own uh, YouTube channel. Even the, the guy who does the filming for him, Colin, he's even got his own YouTube channel. The guy's brilliant with his editing, by the way. It's really just high quality stuff. You should go check him out. Now, the particular member that I'm talking about has his channel, his own channel called Bubby Golf. Bubby started out, I believe, on TikTok, sort of making these trick shot videos and just had, I think, tons of followers off of that doing all these different trick shots. And he's got a baseball background. He came from baseball. He's a young guy. He's obviously an athlete, got all kinds of athletic ability. Bryson has been on quite a few of their videos and Bubby talks about in a recent video how he was trying to take a page from Bryson and instead of having his hands low, more conventional with that angle between the shaft and the arms, he decided to try and bring his hands up higher at address and set up in order to get more on that single plane. And you can see some of the changes that he made and he, he shows it in videos and, and it really, he says that it straightened out his game a lot. He used to have some, some episodes where he would kind of spray all over. He'd hit these big hooks or these big blocks off to the right. He clearly had a lot of power and a lot of solid impact with the golf ball. So, I mean, he was very skilled in that regard, but the spraying all over the golf course really started to get under his skin, I believe. And he was like, you know what, let me try and get myself straightened out. So he raised his hands up, got more on the single plane, and now if you look at him with his wedges, with his mid irons, he has really got his arms and the club shaft in a single plane position, even though, again, he doesn't have his feet set very wide, he doesn't kind of buckle into that left knee moving forward, you know, he's not increased his distance to the golf ball. I think he actually says that he moved a little bit closer to the golf ball, but as long as you start it on the one plane, and you maintain that throughout your golf swing, and then you come back to impact on that same plane, to me, that is the definition of a single plane golf swing. And therefore, I think that Bubby Golf is now a single plane swinger. Even if you try and take it down to, to all those components and make an argument for those components, really, the only thing that the wider stance and the legs being straight and the, the buckling into the left knee and, and all of these things, the only thing that those really accomplish is, is to try and support the fact that your arms and the club shaft are starting out on one plane. You're trying to maintain that plane, come back to impact on that same plane. All of those other pieces that people have chosen or not chosen in some cases to implement into their setup and into their swing motion is basically all to just support that single plane. So really, the only thing that matters, the only part of the swing that you need to have in order to call yourself a single plane golfer is those arms set up in line with the golf club at address and maintaining them throughout the swing. I realize that that's gonna be controversial with some people. I realize a lot of people are gonna say, hey, that's not the way Mo did it. 
But the way Mo did it, the way Bryson does it, the way Kirk does it, the way Todd does it, and now I guess the way that I do it and the way that Bubby does it, they're all a little bit different, but they're all single plane swings. Guys, thanks so much. I appreciate you watching this video. Be sure to click thumbs up down below. Leave me some comments. What do you think? You're probably going to trash me in the comments, and that's fine. Say what you've got to say. Your opinion matters just as much as mine. We're all just trying to learn here. But do you, A, agree that a single plane swing is really just one component, and B, go check out Bubby Golf. Look at his latest swings, not some of his older stuff, but his newer stuff, and you let me know from the pictures and video that I've included here, as well as what you see on his channel, do you think that he is now a single plane golf swinger? Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the little bell off to the right so you get notified of any new videos. Use the links down below to save yourself some money and support the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.